Ah, my kingdom for a hole saw. You ever notice when you're working the wood, it's real exciting for the first few minutes and then it tapers off rapidly. Let's take a little break, maybe uh, brew some coffee. Also, tis the season, fella's been asking me, this school's back in sesh. The fella's asking me the meaning of life, the universe, and everything. So we'll condense down every single thick self-help book in history. Off the hop here, you're getting life advice from some goof on the internet, you're kind of getting what you pay for. However, you buy one of them $40 self-help books, and the Jesus thing's got about two pages worth of good stuff in it, and the rest is just fluffery on account of marketing. they got to have some thickness there, some girth, in order to uh, impress upon you that it's a weighty volume and well worth the $40 hairs. This ain't that. According to the most important self-help book ever published, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, the answer to the meaning of life, the universe, and everything is 42. Now, 42 is nonsensical. But it actually makes sense because the question is nonsensical. The meaning of life, there is no meaning of life. Ascribing no meaning, nothing, to our lives is pretty fucking bleak. It's like uh, Captain Kirk making a confuser divide by zero. Does not compute. I don't judge though. That, uh, that green chick, she was pretty hot. You ought to see uh, Gene Roddenberry. <laughs> special cut with the trouble with tribbles jesus that guy <laughs> captain kirk is a fucking freak so our lives have no meaning other than what the meaning that we ascribe to them but the question here is how do we find our own meaning and we find that through purpose what you are looking for ultimately you got to set goals oh, i can't even read that you got to set goals everybody knows that but well, why do you got to set goals? Because it gives you purpose. When you're a younger man, you don't even know you're doing this. You go to 6, uh, 6 a.m. practice in order to uh, win the championship so you can finger bang the bell of the ball. Uh, you'll settle for a hockey puck, but what that is is a goal, and moving towards that goal gives you purpose in your life. Now, you are never ever going to achieve anything more than your wildest dream, than your wildest goal. So people tell you to set achievable goals. I tell you to set unachievable goals. One of the things is we live in a media saturated culture. Now the media is there to sell you things. And if you're not buying something, that means that you are the product. And by and large, the media over time has, has tweaked, has very, has finessed their pitch in that men are infantilized. That is, they're incapable, essentially, of doing anything, and they're bad. And women are dehumanized in that they should be beautiful Stepford wives, uh, sex goddesses that do absolutely everything. Both empty and essentially unachievable for women and essentially unachievable for men. You cannot stay in your parents' walled garden playing Xbox for the rest of your life unless you only want to live till you're 25 because, um, partner, you're going to off yourself. It's fucking miserable. It's fucking miserable. You need a goal, a big goal, and you need to move towards it, and that is your purpose. So how do you... How do you move towards a goal where you don't even know what the fuck you want to do? So pick something cool, what you'd like to do. Computer programmer, engineer, doctor, uh, fighter pilot. Okay, how do I become a fighter pilot? It doesn't happen overnight. What you need to do is reverse engineer the steps to get there. So you set your goal and then you look backwards. That's the beauty of the human mind is we can move ourselves through time Ask people who have gone through it. What did you do to get to be a fighter pilot? And then you enact the steps to get there. I'm not saying because you have a goal of being a fighter pilot that you're going to become a fighter pilot. Chances are you won't because ain't nobody give a fuck about you. It's an inevitability. You are going to fail. You're going to eat a whole shit ton of turd sandwiches 
and you're going to fall flat on your fucking face. Life sucks. It sucks for everybody. It doesn't matter if you're worried about the next bowl of rice to feed your starving kids or you're worried about buying the next Maserati. You're working towards goals. That gives your life purpose. If you're not working towards a goal, you got no purpose. You're looking into that pit of despair and anxiety. It's a horrible place to be. So set your goals in order to eke out some small amount of fulfillment. A couple tricks here for grin fucking the shit out of turd sandwiches, which you will inevitably need to eat. Now, at this point in my life, I don't do anything I don't fucking want to do. I don't do nothing unless I choose to do it. But here's the thing. I choose to take on onerous tasks as a challenge to my mental toughness. And I eke out some fulfillment from completing the nastiest of jobs. If it was easy, somebody else would have fucking done it. So I give myself, you know, if a tree falls in the forest, every once in a while I give myself the toughest man alive award. You know, that's up for grabs daily. You, you can win that toughest man alive award any day. You just got to have the mental toughness to put out. You don't got to do it all the time, but you got to be able to put out 100% effort when it calls for it. When your life calls for it, you need to be able to bend your mind and uh, bend your strength of arm to your will to complete a task. And that is the essence of grin fucking the shit out of turd sandwiches. Just eke out a little bit of fulfillment from those nasty little jobs, what nobody else wants to do, but you do. Another trick is to use the effort you already put in to, you, you leverage that effort to continue that onerous task or that, the pursuit of that very difficult goal. You're, uh, say you're doing a triathlon. Uh, I don't, fuck, I don't run unless somebody's chasing me. <laughs> those days are over, but, uh, I do get plenty of exercise and occasionally even sex exercise. What you got to do is your mind likes to be comfortable. Your parents are not doing you any favors by creating this comfy little walled garden because eventually you're going to need to peek outside the walls of that walled garden and it's going to be fucking rough. The sooner you can do that, the better. And especially young men, if you're you know, if you're 18, 17 and thinking about going and doing something, fuck sakes, do it now. You got testosterone just a fucking raging. What you can do at 18 is not what you can do at 25. 25, it takes a lot more mental toughness to get through because you don't have that, 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 that rebellion. You don't have that seething hatred in your belly just burning a hole in you. That's your testosterone and use it to your advantage because partner, it goes quick, which thank fuck it does because uh, otherwise we'd all be dead. But <laughs> okay, so leverage the effort, what you already put into an onerous task. If you have a small failure, how you have a slip up, your brain wants to be comfortable. It's going to tell you, fuck this. Let's go play Xbox. Don't listen to it. Think to yourself, holy shit. I already trained for you know, how many 6 a.m. practices did I go to to get to this point and I'm going to fucking quit? Are you kidding me? So, don't quit. There's an oft-quoted uh, Navy SEAL, uh, well, Navy SEAL and Navy SEAL's uh, toughness moniker, misnomer, whatever you want to call it. When you're physically, when your brain is telling you you're done, you're actually only about 40% done. You still got plenty left in the tank. Remember that. When you're absolutely fucking knackered and you're done, you want to throw in the towel, that's your brain trying to get comfortable, go eat bananas under the, under the banana tree. You still got probably 60% left in the tank. Another trick, do not listen to other people. They're fucking morons. By and large, other people are fucking morons. Because... If you have something in your heart of hearts you want to do, that is a goal. And working towards that goal gives you purpose in your life. So somebody telling you you shouldn't do something is nixing your goal, meaning you're not worth having purpose. They're fucking morons. Don't listen to them. Another important point, point, 
tongue-tangulated. Take the long view. Don't worry so much about today, tomorrow. Uh, look at the long view. What you're doing now, does it affect positively or negatively yourself in the future? Because ultimately, you're taking a loan from your future self for any kind of fuckery. For instance, so you set a goal, you're going to graduate high school so that you can take a year off. Long term, uh, taking a year off in your parents' comfortable little walled garden, is that going to help you out? Fuck no. So don't do it. Go to school or go to work or do something moving toward or travel the world, uh, climbing peaks, mountain peaks, whatever it is, whatever your goal is, make sure that that goal helps your future self and not detracts from your future self. Harness the power of the learning curve. And this is part of the reason why you do not want to sit at home uh, taking a year off because eh, I'm going to have to work for the next 65 years of my life. I, j I just want to relax, you know, after uh, high school. It, it, it's fucking bullshit. So your learning curve looks like this. Mine, everyone's. So here's zero years. Here's 30 years. Here's fucking, it's logarithmic. Here's, wow, we'll do hours. Here's 3,000 hours. Here's 500 hours. Here's zero hours. The learning curve means that it sucks when you first start learning a skill. And it sucks especially hard if you're not interested in learning that skill. But you need the mental toughness to be able to learn things what you don't want to learn. And the beauty about the learning curve is it takes some guys three or 30 years to learn everything there, everything there is to know about a certain subject matter to be a subject matter expert, a master in the field. However, it takes but, well, probably even less than that, probably 100 hours to get up to 90% of what this guy knows. So there's a cost-benefit in every learning equation, every skill you are learning. And I will tell you, there's certain things you can learn from a book and certain things you cannot, and anything physical building or uh, riding a bike, uh, riding a skateboard, learning to play hockey, anything like that, you cannot learn from a book. Don't even try. What you do is you get yourself a coach and you get what you pay for. If you want to learn how to mountain bike, hire yourself a coach because the guy who is really good at it might not be any fucking good at coaching you. He'll just tell you, well, how do I do that 12-foot gap jump? I don't know. You just do it. Because he's internalized that. You want someone who's able to take that internalization and compartmentalize it so that he can explain it to us morons down here at the you suck zone of the learning curve. So harness the power of the learning curve because it takes very little effort to get up to 90% of the knowledge of this fella what's been doing it for 40 fucking years. When you put the last two points together, take the long view and the learning curve, what you end up getting is that tiny improvements over time make huge differences. You're not going to get to be an astronaut in one hop. That's going to take a daily routine of learning and working towards that goal to get there. You're not going to do it in one day. Rome wasn't built in a day and neither was your life. So you need not only to take the long view, but also recognize that tiny improvements continually over time add up to a huge huge advantage and next is a very uncomfortable subject for uh, people especially who have been brought up in the west who uh, you know it's all gun drops and lollipops it ain't that partner people are shitty essentially you put a hundred people in a room 10 percent uh, 10 of those people will be utterly unemployable broken people uh, drug addicts. It's no surprise people. It, it's a surprise when people don't take drugs because their existence is so miserable. Two of those people are going to be uh, sociopaths, lie, cheat, steal in order to get one over. That's their motivation is to get one over on somebody else. And it's that person's fault because they were too stupid to recognize that uh, those people are sociopaths. So I had an interesting conversation nigh on a year ago with my daughter 
wherein I got out of the truck. It was uh, coming down the fence line. I got out of the truck, this big old fat black bear, and uh, I growled at it, and it fucked off in a huge hurry. That, that blew my daughter's mind. So I explained to her, well, we chatted about it. What makes things run away? Well, she came to the conclusion that a monster makes things run away. So that means that within us is the power of a monster. And we neglect that in our day-to-day -day lives. You could get behind the wheel of your pick -em up truck and uh, mow down 12 old ladies in the course of 30 seconds. We all have that power within us. And it's a holy, ungodly terror of a power that we don't we tend not to acknowledge because it's so uncomfortable for us that you know uh, firearms are scary or uh, knives are scary pay attention to what you're doing and recognize that other people might not be paying attention to keep that monstrous power within them now here's the beauty about that is that if you encounter a monstrous person a bully or a sociopath you don't need to be tougher or smarter than the bully or the sociopath you just need to be tougher or smarter than the next schlub because they will move on to an easier target now here's the most important one of all this is the one that gives me meaning and fulfillment when working towards my goal is don't be shitty how do you not be shitty Use the truth. It is so empowering to not lie. And I'm talking, you know, when I was a younger man, lies of convenience. Uh, yeah, I, I already had supper. I'm not hungry. Or, or uh, yeah, I was working late when, uh, you know, in reality, I was kind of messing around with my own project late or, or whatever it is, whatever kind of little lies that, that come out of you. All those little lies demean you. When you are able to stand up tall and instead of being a little scared rat telling lies and worrying about when someone is going to find you out, you're telling lies, why? To make yourself uh, look better than you are, to uh, get one over on somebody else for convenience sake because you don't want to have to explain yourself use the truth it is so empowering it, it it's like having a superpower the coffee jitters they're kicking in just about coffeeed out so in answer to your question should i go to engineering school should i change my career from plumbing to electrician should i take that job overseas knowing now what makes your life worthwhile that is purpose makes your life worthwhile and how do you get purpose by going after goals i tell you no matter what the question go fucking do it